Anyway, guys, um, should we actually uh, finish the hex and get the secret ending? I have a thing here that I want to read to you, okay? That I saved about how to get this uh, weird ending, so. And the entire process of how people actually got to it. So, there were three big secrets, okay? That the game hidden in various parts of it. The first one was the locket, and the second one is Wizaro. So, in the Secrets of Legendaria, you're able to fish up half of a heart locket, which Lazarus ends up keeping. In Vicious Galaxy, you can fish again, which we missed, by the way, to get the other half as well. On the left challenge room, I don't know what this means. A secret pathways brings you to a character named Wizaro. If you have the locket and talk to him, he says he will be able to translate the locket if he had the cipher to decipher it. I don't think we ever found the secret pathway. The left challenge room. Did we ever see that? Next, you go into Waste World, and when choosing Rocky's buff, a line of code flies by saying cipher dot cipher. If you go into the game's save data folder and make a text file named that, Wizaro will speak a long string of random numbers and letters. Um, the cipher. If you enter the line S at XXXX at R177A, which is probably Sasparilla, then there's another string XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The only character related to Daniel's games that has four-digit password is the Hopeless Soul from Pony Island. So that part is 2734. And just like that, we have the full cipher. So you had to input a code from another game, the previous game. That's insane that this is, like, the, the thing. This is pretty much an, um, like a meta game at this point. The locket message. When the final cipher is put into the document, the final message in the hex is read. It appears to be a discussion between Lionel and Carla, which reads as the following. Lionel says, Hey, I know things haven't been too great between us lately. Carla, dot, dot, dot. Lionel, I don't have any other friends, okay? I need a favor. Carla says, dot, dot, dot. Lionel, if something ever happens to me, can you make sure this gets into a game? Maybe one of your own? You always wanted to make that phishing game. Zip file send progress complete. Carla says, what the hell is this, Lionel? Lionel, just please, promise me. Remember when we were kids? You used to swing on that swing and yell over to me every time you got above that fence. Carla says, okay, okay, enough of that. I'll hide your creepy file somewhere. I've got to go, and I'm blocking you. And that's it. And then we have to play uh, Beneath the Surface, the game that Carla made, that's on Steam as a free-to-play fishing game, which I am going to launch right now. Hopefully it's not too loud, by the way. I'm going to preemptively uh, maybe... It doesn't seem to be too loud. Okay. Uh, Beneath the Surface is an idle fishing game, in which which is actually kind of fun. The game will last for about an hour for a normal playthrough. Okay. So, we'll just play through the game, and then I'll tell you what happens when it happens, okay? We'll just drop that thing. You can go up down to five meters. I got the tackle box. It can upgrade your rod. That's timely. All right. There you go. Ah. Uh, oh, look, we have a, a mouse over thing. Okay, I am invested. I know, right? We can buy line length already. Let's uh, fish a little bit more. Fishing upgrades. This is my gem. I know this is really good. Oh. Oh, did I lost? Did I lose it? Fuck, man. I found an old boot. A soggy old boot. Nice. Good stuff. That's a little bit more money. And we can upgrade my hook. There you go. Oh, I found another boot. All right. Let's keep going. Let's go deeper. Go down to four meters. I found an anchovy. Tastes salty and a bit chovy. Right, yeah. Good stuff. I've got a pond skimmer. It's not even a fish. Real speed increase and line length by five meters. All right. We can go down. Look at that. To eight meters. Another anchovy. All right. Let's go down to ten. Another one. All right. Let's say around the seven meter range. If there's uh, makes a difference. Oh, there's a blowfish. Nobody messes with a blowfish. All right, let's go deeper. We got down to 15 now. There's nothing. I got lied to. That was a lie. Oh, 
An Arctic Salmon. Look at that. It could go to Japan and back. Nice. We can upgrade the real speed again. I'll do that. Yeah, I want to go down there real fast. And then back up. Salmon. That's an expensive one, isn't it? The Salmon is really good. Let's go deeper. Let's go down to 17, 18. The next upgrades are very expensive, by the way. That's a radio. Somehow, it still works. Yo, we have music now. Oh yeah, I dig this game. This is nice. Yo, Carla making the good games though, huh? A sea sponge. Was someone bathing here? Who knows? Anyway, uh, we're almost close to another upgrade. Oh, another Arctic Salmon. Reading the bad reviews of people who judge this game on its own merit, it's entertainment in its own right. <laughs> yeah, they probably did not really get it, did they? I have a better hook now. What that means really I can probably get some cooler stuff I mean to be fair uh, this game was it was <laughs> to no one's surprise it was in uh, my ignore list It was in my discovery queue, and that's why I ignored it, because I didn't know what it was, and I said, like, oh, the fuck is this? An idle fishing game? Hell no. And here I am, playing the idle fishing game. Because of freaking... The hex. <laughs> Alright guys, we can go deep now. We can go down to 23, 25, 30. A sponge. In a nutshell, it's too small, too short and lacks progressive options. While you do unlock idle mechanics, you're still very much on hand. Ooh! Ever pregnant guppy. What the fuck? This is unethical. Uh, why is it here? That's weird. Oh, it's making me money. Oh, that's awesome. I found another one. All right, they're making me money. Free money. Uh, while you do unlock kind of mechanics, you are still very much on hands for most of the time, but still have this playthrough with everything unlocked in the game, unable to recognize the depth correctly anymore after about 30 minutes. Sure, it's free, but a good game, it's not. <laughs> I mean, it's fun though. This is the thing, it's sort of fun. Yo, look at that. All right. Look at that money generation now. Another one. Yes. yes. More. More. Give me more. A rainbow trout. It tastes fabulous. Nice. Gonna upgrade my real speed next. Mm -hmm. 
An Arctic carp. Carpe diem. Good stuff. A strange head. Uh, I wonder where that's from, you know? Is it a helmet or something? Golly gee. Uh, that's probably from a game called The Hex, isn't it? Someone wrote a four-paragraph review on it describing how good the foundation it is and decrying its wasted potential. Good lord. Guys, my army of pregnant guppies, it's sort of disgusting. But it's making me a lot of money. And it keeps growing. Hey, it keeps growing. Let's go deeper. It's a land of rainbow trouts now. Down in the 40 meters range. Which is good because they're worth a lot of money. There you go. Okay, speed upgrade. Next is going to be... Uh, I'm probably going to go for the hook upgrade. Or maybe one more line upgrade. Sure, why not? There you go, we can go up to... down to 45. An anchovy. Huh. From a faraway land. Hmm, I wonder if that's a reference to another game. Down to 50 meters. We need more speed. I want more speed. Give me speed. What a game, huh? Freaking guppies go there making me all the money, really. <gasps> the golden guppy. Hard to say no to that. Oh my god. How much money is that making me? A lot. Oh my god, here we go, guys. It's happening. I need to go deeper. I wonder if I put my line at 666 if something bad happens. I sort of want to try. We'll get there. We're close to the... Uh Go. I feel like I should upgrade my hook though. It's been a while. And look, with all the golden guppies now making me money, I'll get there in no time. There you go. Alright, we have a better hook. I don't know what that means. I need more speed. I need more speed. Always more speed. I think the hook makes them bite faster. I 
few anchovies down in the 60 range. There's a storm, by the way. There's a blizzard. All right, faster. I want to go faster. Even faster. Give me more golden guppies. I dare you. I want more money. Fuck your rainbow trials, man. Come on, give me good stuff. There it is. More speed. Even more speed. All right, I'm gonna upgrade the line length in a moment and go down to 65, okay? Next upgrade, we can go down to 666, if I can. Alright, there you go. Alright, that was a perfect 666. And it was just an, an anchovy. Well, I tried, okay? Down to 70. Five. We need to go deeper. We can go down to 80 now. Yes, give me more golden guppies. This is so fucked up though, with all the pregnant fishes just giving birth to an endless stream of tiny fishes that I'm instantly selling and offering to the sky gods. That is, um, quite something. That's a hugging shell. Must have drifted a long way. Hmm, I wonder... If that's another, yet another reference to another game. So we found three references so far, right? The anchovy for the desert section, the sahagin for the fishes, the fishing section of that game, a walrus, okay. We found a robot head from Combat Arena X. More well, walruses. This is zero out of 30 fishes found though. I don't know what that means. But the walruses are worth a lot of money, okay? A rubber ducky. A programmer's best friend. It's him. It's ducky. I maxed out my uh, my hook. Okay. The walruses. A sea sponge. So pretty much, I instantly get 
whatever I want from whatever depth. It doesn't matter. I just instantly get the bite. Which means all we have to focus on is speed now. Come on, maximum speed. There we go. Faster. I wonder if I'm maxed out on um, the guppies. I keep getting these stupid walruses. I can go down to a hundred now. Surely. There's something good at 100. Walruses. How am I even fishing walruses? 100 meters down, deep in the walrus. That's insane. Go deeper. I, I don't want to see any more walruses, okay? There you go. Deep sea jelly. You deep sea jealous? That's exactly what I wanted to see. So where were the um does anybody remember the um, the depth of the golden guppies? It was around 70. Was it 50? Oh yeah, it was around 50. I want more of those. Give me more. I need more automatic money making. Sixty nine. Nice. 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 And look at that. We're stacking them now. That's exactly what I want. 666. Rainbow trail. Alright, let's go deeper. 110. 115. Deep sea jelly. 94 is gonna be a fucking walrus. God damn it. A strange device. Is this a part of a machine? I don't know. What, what the fuck? Okay. I mean, it's there now. You must be getting sick of the old one. Yo, upgrade. Could you dick in it? Great, what the fuck? Why would I do that? It's a strange machine. What if it's a pencil sharpener? Huh? What then? Four twenty. Uh, I gotta get a four twenty upgrade. Got it.
Vampire Toothus. Vampire Toothus? Legend says it comes from hell. Okay. There was nothing on my hook. Can we have an upgraded um, guppy? Like something better than the golden ones? Like a diamond pregnant guppy? Or something? I don't know. Yo, but a new uh, music cassette, that's really good though. Music upgrade. A strange hat. It fits very nicely. Is that Wizaro's hat? That has to be Wizaro's hat. Do the thing. Hey, 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 there you go. 69 again. I need more of those. I need more passive money making. I think. have infinite of those. I mean, it's very fast. Going down there now. And it's getting faster. Yo, I actually maxed out my speed. Alright. There's no reason for me to... Get that much running. Uh, a device part. It fits right on. Okay. Hatchery tank. The device seems to be a hatchery. Okay. Oh my god, it's making golden guppies. Alright. It's, it's just making guppies. I've unlocked the secret of unlimited resources. Like exponentially growing. Moray eel. That's a moray. That's a moray. Alright. So this is zero of 30 fishes found. Though. Don't know why. Finding some fish. I'm trying my best. Oh, 
want to find those, those fucking... That's a more. Oh, look at the speed of these things giving birth. To awful tiny fishes. I am directly sending into the sky. <laughs> hey, Jack. I'm afraid I cannot control the ads. Hello, hi. <laughs> fishing oh my god lantern fish need a light i mean i don't know do i It's so good though. <laughs> 190. What? Almost 200 meters deep. And still we find just eels. of pregnant guppies though it's making me so much cash it's sort of disturbing but you know what doesn't matter because we're down to 200 now that's where the real sea monsters hang out you know an ice cube i found myself what all right that was weird. Deeper. Deeper. Uh, Merm. Things are getting strange down there. They really are. What the heck is going on? I told you guys, 200 meters, that's where all the weirdos of the sea are. You know? Yo, those mermaids are worth a lot of money. And we're selling them. I'm selling mermaids. I thought 200 was the last one, don't know what it is then. <laughs> uh, I'm just fishing, you know. Getting rich, yeah, yeah. go so deep though I found the sun at least it fetches a good price that it does alright okay I think this is what we needed to find. Hang on, let me read my thing. So we found an old locket, okay? Um, you can fish up the locket and it will display a huge line of code. 
The final part of this is to add the cipher dot cipher with the completed cipher to the beneath the surface save data. Okay. So how do I do that? Okay. I'm gonna go to uh, what's my save data for the game? Design documents. My games. It's not there. Um Saved games? Nope. It's in the Steam folder? Alright. Uh, that should be... Uh, did I even install this? Here we go. Beneath the surface. Okay. Just put it into everything that is how I find save folders. Right. So where does this go even? There's a save data. There's a data folder. Is it that one? Or is there another one in here? I mean, I can't find a save data folder. There is a beneath the service uh, underscore data. Gotta put it in there, probably. Um, okay, I'm gonna make a new file called uh, cipher dot cipher. All right. And what do I have to type in there? Do I have to... I don't think you necessarily have to do that. I don't? What do I type in the cipher though? This is not very clear. That is how they found the type line on the .exe. Right. Because it says... Um, where is it? This will change the locket message to type lionel.exe. If you do this, the final secret is revealed. So I think we just have to type lionel.exe. Oh look, I still have upgrades. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm finishing the game first. Play. The game closed itself. <laughs> I got so deep that I actually fished myself. Okay. <laughs> All right, that was cool. Um, so I'm gonna just restart the game and type Lionel.exe. All right. Not working? Where do I type it? Do I have to... Oh! Um... Installing Lionel.exe Oh, what? This is Lionel Snow. But I'm recording this because I've... <sighs> this is crazy, right? Speaking to a video game character? Come on. <sighs> well, here it goes anyways. What the heck? I can't activate subtitles, guys. There's no option, there's nothing. What's this? I've seen some things lately that made me think. What if the characters that I've created 
live somehow. Like in some way they know who I am. It's probably nonsense, just some trolls on the GameWorks forums getting the better of me. Surely, it's just on trolls on forums, guys. What is this? Test floor drop. But in the case that the stories they tell are true, and in the really unlikely case, I think I would owe one of my characters an apology. One of them? Or like, pretty much all of them. Put the secret here, he says. If we go through. Nope. This seems like the cave where uh, the no one F else knows this. BS section. But happens. Super Weasel Kid was not my first game. I actually made this really janky root beer game when I was even younger. There is a secret there in the third part of the hex. Oh right. Interesting. The cages for um, the weasel and Mr. Shrew. The only thing I liked about it was the main character, Root Beer Reggie. I made him look like a younger version of my grandpa. Then, after my grandpa passed, I still had Reggie. I don't know what I was thinking, but when Super Weasel Kid was almost done, I figured that I'd ought to delete the old root beer game. I guess I thought it looked better if my very first game was something great. Like I was some kind of prodigy. Irving handled deleting the files. I couldn't bear doing it myself. He told me that Reggie would be exported to a different game, but I never saw him again. Hmm. Interesting. Why would Irving do that, though? Oh, this is the, the beer factory thingy. Irving broke his legs. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, if you're out there somewhere, Reggie, I still miss you. Oh, no. And I'm sorry. Oh no. That's it. Um, what? Oh! Um... Do I have uh, do, do I have Sado on my PC now? <laughs> Hidden somewhere. It's probably uh best not to think about that one. Yeah. I'm sure it's nothing. I I'm sure it's fine, you know. <laughs> wow, that was a great um sound hot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. But that was great. That was actually really, really great. And the implications of like Lionel hiding this apology to Reginald uh, and you know, you finding that out through a very, very long um secret hunt that lasted for months of real time and people searching for these things. And uh, after Lionel does, sorry, not Lionel, after uh, Reginald does everything in his, you know, ability to kill Lionel, and Lionel just wanted to apologize to him. That's so weird. But what is up with Sado, though? What's, uh, what's with Sado? Why, was it, why did Carla do something like that? I'm guessing she was, like, resenting, um... Lionel, you know, for sort of being an asshole, you know? He hired her, she had a career, she was, like, studying. But from what we 
saw in the um in the self narrated section you know like the lionel memoirs he was sort of a dick right he became famous very quickly he got a lot of money very quickly and that kind of made him a little bit of an asshole I mean, to the point where that ruined his friendship with Carla. And Carla, as we know, blocked him. After Lionel asked her to, you know, install this Lionel.exe in her game. Asked her to know what Sada was all about. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the one, you know, uh, explanation I can... It's just an assumption, obviously, but, you know, a theory. That's my theory. It was probably Carla trying to undermine his work from the inside. Because all the corruption and all the corrupted stuff started appearing uh, after Carla was hired. It was never in any other game before. So yeah, that might be... That might be it. It definitely was her. Yeah, it definitely was her because we know that she made Sado when they told uh, Lionel that, you know, he had too many male NPCs in Combat Arena X and he had to insert some female characters. Um, he made the Chandrel, which... Okay, imagine you are a game dev team, okay? Your boss is in charge, and it's making this fighting game, and all he does is making these muscular, you know, alpha male characters, and then to diversify the character rooster, they ask him, the other devs, you know, working for him, they ask him, why don't you insert a female character? And what does he do? He makes Chandrel, which is sort of like a sexualized, you know, female character. She's very provocative. She's got like a big, um, you know. It, it's one of the classic female characters made by a, a man. So Carla was probably pretty pissed about that. And that's why she made uh, Sado, which was a much more interesting female character. But what happened there, uh, it's not really spelled in the game but what we can infer is that Lionel made Sado the bad guy of his video games because she was like the final boss in uh, Combat Arena X right and Carla was probably not too happy about that one was it Lionel though I mean I think it was and that was right before uh, the game was sold to uh, game Funa I think Commodore was supposed to be a PvP. Maybe, yeah. I mean, in the game we saw, she Sado was the final character that you fight. You know, the the strongest one. But yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe she was just made too strong by Carla, possibly, or maybe not. Who knows? But we know that at that point, Lionel was hating that game and the development of that game. That's why he decided to sell everything to Game Funa. Because of the constant, like, balancing and, you know, the people just yelling to him. Inscription? Yeah, that's a new one, isn't it? Actually, very excited about that one. Oh, look at that! All right, let me see if I can show this on stream. Um, 
Hang on just a moment. Let's go down here. Oh, hang on. I'm not doing it properly. My bad. Okay, now this should be... Why is that not visible? Give me just one second, guys. There it is. So this is like uh, the website of his new game, right? And there's this weird old school computer uh, window, which looks exactly like the one we saw in in the hex. And there is an email. There's multiple emails to Game Funa. So the first one was sent. So he was the one that sent the email. Hello there. My name is Luke Carter and I'm a fan of your collectible card games. If you've ever taken a look at my YouTube videos, you will know how appreciative I am of the merch that you've sent me over the years. So it was a great surprise to learn that there is a digital version of the inscription. I think maybe one of my fans pranked me and buried a copy in the woods near my house. What? Upon further research, however, I have not been able to find any trace of this game. Is this some kind of elaborate hoax? The game doesn't seem to like... It doesn't seem like the work of a prankster. It at least appears to be professionally made. I am both puzzled and excited by this discovery. Any information you can provide would be much appreciated. Thank you, the lucky Carter. And GameFuna responded... Um, Mr. Carter, we have received your inquiry regarding a digital version of our intellectual property inscription. We can assure you that no such software exists in any official form. However, if you have indeed come into possession of a proprietary GameFuna hardware, you are compelled to return it to us under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The hardware will be considered stolen if it's not returned to us within a reasonable time frame. Please carefully package the hardware and paste the attached shipping label to the front of the box. You may mail the package at a local post office. We would like to avoid taking legal action in your case, so please do not delay in returning the proprietary hardware. Sincerely, GameFuna. Hmm. Interesting. Hi, John. I found your Twitter profile, and I adore your work. I'm working on a video. I'm going to need some fast animation effects. I think your style would be a great fit. There's a draft. I don't understand. If the software doesn't exist, then how? <laughs> Is this a trailer? Looks great. <laughs> oh man, this actually looks great. good that's good stuff so the demo is out now i think the game is in early access though but uh you know once it's out of early access <clears throat> we can definitely give it a go you see the developer overview i don't think i did
What was that? Interesting. Very interesting. Hey there, card gamers. I'm the Lucky Carter, and this is another pack opening video. Today, I am opening Catch Monsters packs and digging for that epic, shiny Transcend Dog! And here, I'll add some crazy VFX with lightning bolts or something. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am about to open my first pack. Feeling good about this one. Feeling real good. Ooh, what do we got here? Okay, and our first rare is... Man, that's a lot a of cards. Birchkin. Not exactly a viable competitive card, but hey, it's a pretty one. All right. Next pack. He found the Feeling dupe. even better about this one. In his first pack, I'm gonna laugh. I gotta say, these cards are feeling extra silky today. I mean, they're so smooth. Not sure what they're doing down there at the uh, the card factory, but um, these are feeling good in my hands. Okay, let's see what we got here. Some jank cards. Maybe a few additions to my draft cube. We'll see. And our rare for this pack is. Bandog! Not exactly riveting so far, but we have many packs to go. <laughs> Next pack, here we go. This is, this is, you know, um, I feel personally attacked. Because I definitely remember opening booster packs for freaking Magic the Gathering. And having that feeling, okay, the next pack is going to be the good one. Oh, the rare is shit. <laughs> it's fine, we have so many more to go. <laughs> Okay, that's not good. That's him gone insane. Yeah, he's uh, gone insane. So it was the third recommended in the YouTube clone. Right. Hey there, car gamers. I'm. <laughs> oh, shit, that opened that new window. Hang on. Hi, my name is Daniel and I'm the developer of Inscription. Today I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of the game, show you a thing or two, and by the end of it, maybe you'll have some of your questions answered. So, mm -hmm. without further ado, let's take a little look. So we're going to start off right here on the map screen and get right into a battle. The first thing you're going to want to know about Inscription is that squirrels are the basic resource. We're just going to put some down here. It's um, no big deal. That's what they're there for. They're, they're to be sacrificed. All the basic resources. Majestic creatures like the wolf. And the wolf is a powerful card. Oh, to that's attack. It's just going to easily win this battle. Really, no problem at all. And then we get to carry on down the forest path. Something else you'll do a lot in Inscription is add new cards to your deck. So right. here we get the choice, and I think we're going to end up picking the Elk Fawn. A great card. It's going to be a little Elk Fawn running along beside us. It's wonderful. And so this battle is going to show... Uh... Hey, you watching the trailer. Oh, this is a, a little joke I put in. It's just... No, it's not a joke. Uh, I need actually, you to yes, help me. It is, actually. It's kind of just a funny little joke. Talking card. Uh huh. Some comedy to things. Please and, uh, listen. You know, maybe something that'd be a good play would actually be just to sacrifice it. Just get rid of that because it. Look, the stone only has one attack. Wait. We'll get the wolf out there. Do some real damage. A... I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? The one attack stone when we have a card like the wolf. It's really a kind of a silly decision, actually. Oh my god. So, okay, here. Well, we're just now going to get into a boss battle, <laughs> and this boss is called the Prospector. 
He's got a crazy pickaxe. He'll smash up your cards. It's really scary. And uh, it took me a little while. <laughs> Open the safe. Uh, Three, uh, let's seven, just actually two. Remove that one entirely. The safe. Okay, and uh, oh, oh, um, oh, this is actually kind of weird. I, I'm actually not controlling this right now, so this would probably be a good. Yeah, let's just cut it. We'll cut it right here. Grandsando! Okay, that was very annoying. Uh, let's just end things there. So, anyways. If you like what you uh -huh. saw, don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam. Pick it up oh, on I October will. 19th when it comes out. That was Inscription. My name's Daniel. Have a great day. Wait, is it actually coming out on October 19th? Yeah? Oh, man. How much is it? I don't think I can... I don't think I can afford that. <laughs> it's a shame. I would love to play that though. Wait, did I add it on my wish list? Rip. Yeah, I know. Don't have a lot of budgets for games nowadays. Uh, inscription. It's not that expensive, you know. Scan to release, yeah. I'm gonna add it to the wish list. Eventually, I'm gonna play it. It's good though. It's good fun. I mean, I I love all his games. Really, Pony Island was phenomenal. You know, to play. Once it arrives in the Game Pass, well, if arrive if it arrives in the Game Pass, then you know, good. <laughs>